Actuality versus reality. This is where relative reality begins to get complicated and difficult to explain. Relative reality is reflective and representative of what the perceived reality is at any point in time. For example, I will probably never visit L.L. Bean in Maine. To me, the reality of L.L. Bean is a little country store out in the woods of Maine, far out on the other end of New England. The reality for me at this point in time is that I can call the friendly store clerk or visit their website and place an order. That is the real experience. It is relative reality based on my physical and mental proximity, and it is the majority reality for a million visitors a year. Actuality and reality don't necessarily need to coincide in the physical realm anymore. L.L. Bean in actuality is likely to be a number of large cold metal warehouses with large open truck bays and hundreds of computers spitting out logistics and shipping orders. Is this scenario more real than my wholesome country store reality of L.L. Bean, even though I don't know for sure if these massive fulfillment centers exist? As you can see, my reel is a mass marketing projection of L.L. Bean, most likely a far cry from actuality. Advertisers have taken this perceived reality to the limits, and you buy into it. If you don't believe me, how much did you pay for a .25 fluid ounce bottle of obsession perfume? Ancient mythology, although historically far richer and deeper than ad executives hawking stink water, worked the same way prior to modern life. The interesting thing is that if today you were to ask anyone, where is Valhalla, the hall in which Odin received the souls of slain heroes, not the town in New York State, most people would say that Valhalla does not exist. It is an ancient Norse myth created by an ancient people. But to them it was very real. Most Boolean-minded scientists of the 20th and 21st century have disregarded anything that cannot be proven real as not real. The question the relative reality artist needs to ask is, how do you prove something that is not real, does not exist? Next, how do you portray it in your art? These same scientists and engineers have built a fourth dimension for everyone in the world to play in, the Internet. Untouchable, yet it is a commonplace that can be experienced and shared to connect with other human beings. The only difference between this reality and that of the myths of the ancient civilizations is that we have the power to create and subscribe to many realities instantaneously, as many as we can imagine. This brings us full circle from the mythological reality, which could only be experienced mentally and spiritually, to the scientific revolution of experiencing everything through physical senses, leading to scientific breakthroughs that allow for us to explore new realities which, initially, can only be experienced mentally and spiritually. This circle exemplifies mass surrealism using ideas to create technology, then using the technology to create art. Art is mental and spiritual.